All right, we're recording everybody. It's Sally Hendrick here for the Who's Riding Shotgun Show. Welcome. Yay, I'm so glad to have you here. All right, I've got LaShonda DeBrew, the virtual CFO, which I love that title. It's so cool. And LaShonda and I did a webinar this week, didn't we? We did. Yes. Earlier on um, Wednesday, right? It was on Wednesday. Yeah, I've had so much going on this week. I'm, I'm ready to, for the to be over. I'm ready. Um, and then we have Dallas Goldberg. Dallas, which city do you live in again in California? I'm in Roseville, California. Roseville, that's right. And what is your official title? Uh, my official title of my business is Aligned in Being. I am a transformational body work therapist and a self-mastery coach. Woo, cool. Very cool. All right. Well, this is going to be fun today because we are going to talk about goal setting, which is something that everybody seems to have on their minds when the new year comes around. You can call it whatever you want, resolutions, goals, whatever. I kind of like to call it road mapping, if you will, or mind mapping. And I am kicking off a challenge today, which I'm going to go on and just mention because I don't want to forget to do that. Um, if anybody wants to take a free goal setting challenge with me, it's just a three, a very small three video series that will get emailed out later today. Uh, that's another thing on my list. Um, <laughs> email out today. And then, um, and then in a couple of weeks, I'm doing every show for this, uh, for my who's writing talk, sh who's writing shotgun show for the next two weeks. Uh, are going to be about this particular project. And then I'm going to do a live mind mapping call on February the 2nd to wrap it up. And I'm going to pick a couple of winners that day. One is going to whoever does their vision boards and post that inside my community that, you know, there's a community group for that. Whoever posts that is going to be eligible for a scholarship to one of my courses in my school, the social media traffic school. And, you know, I have anywhere from, you know, goal setting to Facebook ads to MailChimp course to whatever. And it's all technical and strategical, you know, teaching online. And what I'm going to do is take that person who I choose their long term goal, one of their long term goals, and I'm going to reverse engineer it in a digital mind map right on the screen in a webinar for people to be able to see the thought process of starting with something that seems so big and so far away and bringing it back down to more, you know, palatable bite sized pieces as opposed to being such a huge thing, which I think is a big um, a big issue for a lot of people. And then I'm also going to give away a hundred dollar Amazon gift card to someone live on the call who also participated in the challenge. So that's going to be what's coming up. That's why I started this three week series here. So, um, Dallas, let's start with you. I want to hear what you are doing right now in your business and feel free to type your web address or whatever over to the side or your Facebook page or something for people to follow you. So let's hear what you are doing. Well, I am at the very beginning stages and I'm just super excited to be participating with you. We've had a few conversations so far about where I'm at. So with my background being a transformational bodywork therapist, I definitely put it, give me a body on a table and I know exactly what to do give me the, what we're doing right now with the tech and all of the things that we need to know to be online in this virtual world of ours. And it's like a foreign language. And so I have been just, I went from super overwhelmed feeling like I was at a buffet of all of these really amazing things that everybody says you need to have in order to be in doing business online. And I didn't know where to start. And so one of the big reasons why I joined up with you, Sally, is because I love your roadmap you. and you being able to take things and break them down into those bite sized pieces. Mm -hmm. I know that anytime I've ever done any type of goal setting or, you know, it's like the, using the smart formula where it's like specific, measurable, achievable, you know, and you go down and I found myself not knowing where to start. And so 
I'm at the very beginning. I'm in the infancy, actually not even in the infancy stage. I'm still in the pregnancy stage of my business. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I have my domain name and I'm getting my, you know, I have my Twitter going and I'm just strategically piece by piece getting everything up and running. And um, it's so much easier. I feel like I can breathe now, whereas opposed to feeling like, I am just running circles at the starting line, trying to keep up with the marathon that's happening in front of me. Well, and the hard part, I totally understand because I've done the exact same thing, and which is why I really, really wanted to put all this together in something, you know, in a better business plan type of fashion, if you will. And when you first get started, you think, oh my goodness there's like 50 new things i need to learn oh and you yes. try to do it all at once and then you're just like overwhelmed yes. you don't know where to go yes. and then and then you spend all this money yep and you have nothing to go for it because you don't really know where to start you can't implement so, exactly mm -hmm. It's crazy. So exactly. Hey, and I, and I, and I did that. I did that. I, I was like, Oh, okay. I'll buy this. I'll buy this. I get that <laughs> course. I get that course. And the next thing I know my, my email, my inbox is being inundated with 50 different things that I've signed up for or, and then I'm like, there's so much content going on that I can't keep up. Right because I felt like I literally had to become a professional online student in order to even take an action step out of what it is, my, my vision of what it is that I wanted to create. And so it was like, there's not enough me. I feel like I was like that, remember that movie Multiplicity with uh, Michael Keaton where he like, he clones himself. But anyway, <laughs> it was like, I, I needed like to clone myself 10 times over in order to keep up with everything. I agree, believe me, I do. I wanted to say real quick, hey, Rick. Um, Rick is a great um, designer online. He's somebody who I recommend in my courses, actually. And then we've got Meg Romstad. Hey, Meg, how are you? And um, I don't know where Angela went. Did she come back? She just I don't know. Well, maybe she'll come back. <laughs> she said she didn't look decent enough to hop on. <laughs> She was supposed right, to be hopping on, hopping on. I thought she was going to hop it's on. It's all right. I'm like, oh, wait, there she is. Okay. Angela, if you she wanted to hop in. Again. Hey, there's Vicki. All right. This is going to be like a reunion here. I mean, we <laughs> 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 this is so cool. Hey, Vicki. Um, yeah, Angela, here you come. Yay. Hi, guys. <laughs> Welcome. 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 Welcome like comfy robe on. <laughs> <laughs> Angela, just real quick, I'm talking to Dallas, but I wanted you to tell us who you are just real quick and then we'll come back to you, come back around to you. Sure. Um, so hi, I'm Angela and I just literally hopped in the room. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm actually a marketer by trade, but an investor by night. And I've just launched a series of initiatives to get regular folk to DIY invest into the stock market. Um, and since then, it's been a wild, crazy ride because my vibration and energy level is rising with this new, um, yeah, like this new acceptance <laughs> of this role of teaching folks how to invest in the stock market themselves because it's at one of a, it's a really low, low right now. So yeah. if you listen to anyone who talks sense, including uh, Warren Buffett, who's like the grandfather, it's like, hey, you buy when it's low and you sell when it's high. So if you're in the buying mood, um, when you hear that the stock market goes through lows, uh, your ears start tingling a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's exciting. Yeah. All right, so Dallas, I wanna to talk to you specifically. What goals have you started thinking about setting for yourself? And it doesn't just have to be business. It could be like a life goal, this goal, maybe a relationship goal or something like that. Absolutely. Well, what's so exciting about this goal setting with and working with you, Sally, is that this is pretty much what I do in my business with my my clients. It's um, but it's on an, it's on a little bit of a different level. So we have our emotional selves, we have our physical selves, we have yeah. our mental selves, and then we have our spiritual selves. And so 
for me, I like to break it down into, okay, give myself a physical goal, which is to get back into my yoga and Pilates. I have, we had a unexpected move about a year ago and my exercise routine went to the wayside. It was like, just had to focus on what needed to get done. So that's my physical goal. Mm -hmm. And then as far as my spiritual or like my mental goal is to just do what I can to be included into like finding those people that have the tools in order for me to access, to make the repairs that I need to make for myself Mm -hmm. and my business. And so, you know, Sally, you're one of those people. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. And I know that I have this amazing product and I know that I have this thing that I can bring to the world, yet the foreign, the, the technical side of things is a foreign language to me. So it's like, okay, learn what I need to learn so that I can master what I need to know so that I can do what it is I want to do. <clears throat> well, and speaking of that, that's the part that can really get overwhelming for people. So how do you handle the overwhelm when it comes to tackling your goals? What I do in tackling my goals to overcome the overwhelm <laughs> is is taking the time. And actually, a year ago, I'll share the story. A year ago is when I was like, OK, I'm going to go online. I'm going to be this entrepreneur. I'm going to take my program. And blah, you know, it's all beautiful. <laughs> and you know, the, the, the heavens part, the angels sing, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's all <laughs> and, dream, right? You know, the vision in my head is like, of course, it's going to be perfect. And it it was like a rapid wake up call to, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? Mm -hmm. And so I stepped back completely. I just had to completely remove myself. And I had to take some time to really get clear about, is this something that I really want to step into? And this is something I really want to do. And I came back with an absolute yes. And so it was like, okay, huge that saying, you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? So here I am at the big buffet of an elephant and I need to break it down into actionable bite sized pieces. Right. And that's what I and that's what I do. The moment I get into that overwhelm mode, it's like take a step back, breathe and like, OK, what do I need to do first? And then I go with just that one thing. Another thing that I've done for myself to get over the overwhelm is I've taken you know, from from trying to follow 10, 15 people to try to gain all of this information, it's like, no, I need to follow maybe three or five people and at then one at one time and start with that. It's like, okay, I know I need, you know, my I need to build my email list. I know I need to do lead pages and, you know, <laughs> Facebook ads I, I know is, a, is an important thing. And so it's like, okay, let's start there. I don't need to have the big beautiful grand website that I really, really, really want. And I will get there eventually. And so it's breaking it down. Actionable steps. Yeah. And, but you're still making money. Sorry. I'm I'm trying to pick up something. You're still Mm -hmm. making money outside of the online world, right? So you're Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. it's not under that type of pressure. Like some people who are starting online, I think some people who start from scratch online don't realize how much work it takes. Mm -hmm. They think, Oh, the internet click, search, done. It's always easy for me in my life to use the internet. It makes things more efficient. So let's just do an online business. And it's like, oh yeah, you got an education to get first. Absolutely. It's like anything else, you know, it's like there, there's a learning curve. (laughs) For sure. Learning curve. And that uh, tends to be overwhelming for people when they start and they don't really even know what type of business they're wanting to do, or maybe they start with an idea. And then what's funny is that it kind of zigzags along the way uh, until you really do find what your brand is going to be and what you're going to put yourself out there as. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I've noticed is that even though people might have an idea what they want to do because they do have an existing business in the real world, um, Mm -hmm. they come online and it's a whole new animal. And so it's almost like they they rebrand themselves and they actually evolve into Mm -hmm. something even more like their real passion. Because they're oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, when I when I first started with my idea, my concept of, you know, putting my my 
program online. I mean, it was originally called Journey to Vibrant and I was going to have like, you know, these eco adventure tours and, you know, these kayaking trips. And I mean, it was going to be all of these other things. And then I finally was like, okay, Dallas, you need to slow down <laughs> and, and we need to like get into, yeah. it's like, you see, you see everybody else's websites and you see everybody else's lead pages and you go, oh, that's so beautiful. That's so cute. Oh, I, that, that looks amazing. And it draws you right in. And it was like, I had to go with, oh, well, wait a minute, I need this graphic or I need these things to kind of come together and merge and to create that branding image. And that was extremely overwhelming in how to pull that all together and make it cohesive, not only through Facebook and through my website, but through every other platform that we're on. It was like, oh, my gosh, I need a whole entire production team <laughs> to pull this thing together. Hold on, uh, Angela's having a problem. Yeah, and I totally agree with you. Like you get online and, and there's just so much that you don't realize you need to know how to do. And, and, mm -hmm. and when it comes to the image and the look and the feel, it just takes a while to get it all to come together. But then you end up, once you find things that click along the way, it mm -hmm. feels so good. It feels so Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, and that is where, and that's where I'm at right now. You know, it's like, okay, let's just, just, it's going to take, it takes time. It takes time. All right. Real quick. I want to say hello to Michelle and to Elizabeth. Elizabeth does Twitter classes. Michelle is an incredible uh, tutorial um, VA, et cetera, et cetera. And more than that, she does courses and all these different things. And we've been working together and Meg, I don't know what you do. I noticed where you are a um, nurse practitioner. So I'm assuming you're doing something online if you're here. So feel free to tell us who you are over in the chat box and what you're doing. Angela's about to come back on. She tried to do, do a fancy trick and then it knocked her back. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, it's not, it's not asking me yet Angela it's not asking it doesn't have an open spot for some reason so I don't know what's happened um, it's not giving me the go ahead maybe you need to I don't know why it's not doing that but the th that fourth spot has disappeared as in I'm not even allowed to bring anyone in at the moment it's not giving me that button um, because she's still show, showing up on the screen, so she's in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's uh, in there, but just well, you're blank. at the top on mine, but you're not on the box on on the yeah, floor. The camera, something is off. The, something is off. I don't know what's going on. Um, so Meg is A N R A R N P in bariatrics, creating bariatric follow up aftercare. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice for people who've had surgery. That's a very good yeah. thing to do. The nice thing I like about the healthcare industry is that um, <laughs> instead of leaving it all to the doctors and nurses in the hospital or in the clinics or or the doctor's office, is that there's a lot more things. You know, the last few years we've all noticed how you know um, the pharmacies will have their little clinics. And then you've got nurse practitioners running a lot more um, practices for people with an oversee from a doctor, and they can they can handle so much up to a certain level, and then and then it turns over to you know the next level. But um, I'm dealing I'm working with somebody right now who is trying to she does Reiki and and meditation work and things like that with people on the outside. She's trying to bring that part to online, but then she has, she's a nurse and she is wanting to create a business dealing with incontinence, which is something that people don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women go through, you know, that sort of thing. And so we're in the process of trying to um, avoid the overwhelm by having her existing business, have her learn the social media marketing aspects of things with her existing business so that she's not trying to create everything at once. If she was trying to create the new incontinence business while she's learning the online stuff, it'll take her three times as long. 
You know what I mean? So she's taking what she knows and she's bringing it to the online world first. And then she will move over into creating her program for the incontinence part of it um, to do that type of consulting. So I find that very interesting that Meg, that you're starting to do this follow up with people who've had surgery. Um, and speaking of roadmaps and goals and so on and so forth, I'm trying my best to put it into that perspective where you do need to accomplish this first before you try to go into the next thing. Cause like if you, I've seen people literally get online and think I want to do this coaching thing online and they go and they pay a $15,000 coach. <sighs> they think that's the answer to making their life, you know, okay. to ramping up to be that big right away. And it's like, yeah, I think maybe you need to start start with whoa, 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 way smaller <laughs> or they go and they buy click funnels on the first day and they don't even have a list. And it's like, OK, I get it that you're you're doing click funnels, which is one of the more expensive software programs out there. But you haven't even written one email yet. You kind of need to start maybe mm -hmm. with something that's free or inexpensive and get used to it, learn how to work it understand how to yeah. make that program work for you. And then and when you're ready, upgrade, you know, move into the next level. And so that's the type of road mapping thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, LaShonda, I wanted to talk with you because we did this webinar the other night on the finance stuff, which I think is very important to uh, wrap your mind around when you're starting a business online or just already have a business and maybe your finances are just all over the place. We talked about profit planning strategy, yeah. tax strategy and all of that the other night in great detail. And we had some technical difficulties. And so I know that you're, you're getting me another um, recording so we can send that out. Right. Uh, when were you planning on doing that? I didn't, we didn't talk about that. I know within the next week, hopefully, um, you know, along with everything else now, just have to set aside the time. Right. To, so you have um, to set that goal. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, re-record that, get that done. That wasn't in the plan, so I have to work that in the plan. I know, I know. But maybe, you know, well, you could probably just narrow it down to just stick straight to the script and just do it. And, and then um, we'll get package up something good for all of those. All for right. those of you, or some of you are in here. Um, oh, Angela, um, Elizabeth is saying you may need to refresh your screen. I'm not really sure what else you need to do. So um, LaShonda, since you are good about keeping things organized and in order and, you know, you deal with money and expenses and, you know, all of these little details, what are you doing to set your goals for something you're not quite 100 percent sure about? Hmm. <laughs> I still try to use the same uh, strategy, you know, as far as, of course, making the list of the different steps and details. I'm getting yeah. some feedback. I know. Let me see. Different steps and details um, that you need to go into um, getting it accomplished. So, you know, and creating systems and processes around it. You know, so part of yeah. uh, me staying on track, of course, is to set aside time during the week, a day during the week or a few hours to look back mm -hmm. at what's on my plate. You know, those things um, that I need to focus on immediately and what the main goal is for the month or the quarter to make sure I'm still on track. So whenever I get something new, such as um, like now, the recording, having to redo that, you know, I'm looking at my schedule now going into next week to say, OK, what time do I have now or how can I work that in so that I'm able to get that um, done and accomplished? And now I'm trying to work out in my mind because I didn't have to do any of the details and setting that up. I only had to show up on the call for that. So now I have to go back and look at my webinar um software mm -hmm. and figure out how to set that up and then now thinking about um recording that micing up you know how all of that is going to work 
So now I'm trying to figure out what are the different elements of that that I need to know and do, which is this whole um, new online world for me um, because I was not familiar with that. Um, but figuring out what the different things are that I need to do and put into place in order for me to record the webinar. So um, Exactly. Well, and now you just need to go back and just particularly on that thing, you just need to go back and look at what happened on there. I've got to go back and figure out, I had no idea that webinar jam was not going to work well with mm -hmm. my Google apps domain um, login. I thought it would be fine. Everything looked fine to start, mm -hmm. but then I wasn't able to open a hangout from there. And I thought that it just wasn't giving me the right, um, you know, the right screen message. I thought it was doing that just because we weren't live yet. But so yeah, when we went right, live, right. I was like, holy Manoli, what am I supposed to do here? Mm -hmm. we, um, I haven't tried easy webinar. Um, Elizabeth's asking if anybody has questions over on the side, if you would type a slash Q before it, so it'll pop up on the other side of our screen, that will really help because um, some of these questions I don't want to miss, but, um, and I have and it'll easy be webinar. Easy. That's the one that I do have. And I have tried it. I've set it up. Um, remember, because I mentioned that to you. So I have gone in the back end to do everything to set it up so that it is operating. But I have not used it for a live webinar for myself. So I did a test webinar and um, I was able to set up inviting people to it or whatever. Um, yeah. But I haven't actually gone live with it. So, of course, I haven't used it probably in about a month or two. So it's just like going back to it new for me right now. So I'm gonna just have to go, you know, back and um, back with me and myself learn. with, right, right. Well, um, yeah, that's one of that's one of the many things I've got to do is to to go back to my webinar jam and they've the support desk is trying to help me with it, but I just haven't had a chance to go back to them yet, mm -hmm. but I will. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so I wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of what I'm going to do over the next two or th well, three to four months. I'm ac actually getting ready to do a 90 day launch of Social Media Traffic School, which of course you guys are familiar with what I'm doing and then I've got all these different courses that are inside of the school and I'm going to set it up very much like um, like you're really enrolling in a school. So there'll be an enrollment period and then we start and we do the school, you know, go through uh, the, the courses. There'll be live presentations. There'll be um, all these different things that will go into it. There'll be a graduation ceremony. There'll be awards. There will be, you know, the whole bit. But one thing I wanted to mention is that a lot of times, and I've seen this happen, because I do technology and I teach people how to do the technology connection of everything so that they can run their business online is that the first thing I want to do with people is this roadmap. I think it's very important for each person to understand what their curriculum needs to be because you may enter into a school, if you will, but if you don't sit down with your advisor and find out what it is you need to take, you yeah. are just looking at this whole roster of courses that, yeah, they're right there in front of you and you can take every single one of them. But yeah. if you have no clue what you're doing to get started, it can literally stop you in your tracks. It does. Yeah. You to and, absolutely. Absolutely. And no understanding way. how they all tie in together. And some of them you may need right away, but some of them you do not need right away and i think that's the thing you know we go acquiring all of these different um softwares or platforms and tools or whatever because we are listening to them on other um calls or webinars and we're thinking and we, and we do need them but we, you don't know what to do with them right away so then that causes you to procrastinate and stall and use that and you don't mm -hmm. know you don't understand how they tie together which was my problem for a long time. I mean, like, what, what does this one do and how does it work with that one or whatever? And the back um, side of it in setting it up, you know, was a hindrance for me. 
Yeah. Well, um, and, I can figure some things out, but that's not how I want to spend my time. That's for sure. <laughs> I, <figured it> <laughs> I mean, I think yeah. I, I probably sat down uh, recently, you know, taking a lot of courses and I didn't know what to take first. I, a lot of times people will come in and they'll think, I need to take this Facebook ads course so I can do Facebook ads. And that'll be the first thing they'll do. And it's like, um, <clears throat> have you put a graphic on your Facebook business page yet? <laughs> right. Have you picked out a color scheme yet? Have you picked out a title for your business yet? You, you're not ready to run a Facebook ad. And there's a whole you know lot to do. <laughs> there's a whole there's so lot to do. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Facebook ads, if you approach it from the, that's what I need to do first angle, it's like dropping coins in the ocean. Oh, I say this all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. are not targeting anything. You're exactly. literally just dropping money out there. You're like, well, I, I want to work with women between these ages and in the United States. Go. <laughs> it's all like, right. well, yeah, you're going to hit a lot of people on Facebook. You're going to hit a lot of people who are not going to sign up for whatever you're doing. And you're going to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on uh throwing your money completely down the drain right and you know vicky's in the class dallas you've just started lashonda you're in the mm -hmm. class who else is in my class is anybody up here i don't think so um you guys know the type of work we've that i was teaching you about really how to research that market and knowing how to um you know be very specific in who you're looking for and there's so much work that goes into that. And sometimes, even though you may think you know who you're supposed to be working with, you really don't until you get in there and start testing things out. And it helps to know that this technology is right there in front of you. Um, I'm reading some of the comments over here. Getting clear. Yeah, we just had we had just had somebody join here. Okay. Hey guys, I don't know who E is. Hey E. Yeah. Female exact magazine. Hello, I'll follow you. Um, sounds very interesting. I agree. Talking issues, E, the magazine, today's female executive, business, tech, lifestyle, food, wine, and more. Ooh, love food and wine. I'm going to St. Martin's. <laughs> Ooh, St. Martin's, here I come. <laughs> very cool. Yes, I followed you. Thank you. Um, so anyway, uh, let me just kind of explain the three steps that I'm putting out in the course. But I do that's the mini course. I do have a longer course that's got like seven different steps. But the first one is find it. First of all, you've got to figure out what it is you need to work on in your life. And, you know, I like to look at the way that Brian Tracy looks at things. He says, you know, there's these three main categories or main areas of life. You've got health and fitness. You've got, um, you know, personal relationships, things like that, your family um, and your, you know, your spiritual self, all of that. And then you've got your career and finance. And a lot of times we tend to be great in one area and not so great in another. And you'd really try to reach that balance, which is what life is all about. It's finding that balance. Absolutely. And then under, yeah. And then underneath each of those categories, you've got all these other different things. And, I, and I've broken it down into about 10 different areas that you can take a look at. And what you'll do, the very first step is going to be just to score each step from one to 10, where you feel you are. Like if you're doing great with your finances, stick a 10 out there. If you are broke, <laughs> you know, put a one or a two or a three or wherever you feel you are in that scale. And then, you know, move into the next thing, spiritual, you know, spirituality. Where are you in that area of your life? Where are you with relationships, et cetera? And, you know, rank all of those things basically. And then the next step is to kind of sit back and go, all right, so which areas do I need to work on in life? But don't forget the areas you're already doing well in. Because if you forget about the fact that your finances are doing great today and you're going to go do some 
spiritual journey to look for yourself in, you know, some other way, because you need to work on that. Um, don't forget about the things you're doing well at, because you've got to keep goals in every area of life to maintain what you've got yeah. or improve on what you've got. And then also to drastically improve when, once you set up these other goals for the pieces where you're, where you're really lacking. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and also I talk to people about, you know, don't tell me you're going to say, I'm going to put my business online. That's my goal this year. And I'm like, <laughs> that's a very undetermined, <laughs> you know, yeah. thing. How about I'm going to actually take all of my friends' emails, put them together in a list and email everyone and tell them I'm starting a business and to please join my list. That's a measurable goal, right? Yes, absolutely. And then you can start creating. if they need because some don't even know the steps that they need to right, do right. or the foundation yeah, to get in online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like to chime in on that as well. When we start breaking it down into it, um, I use with my clients a peace of mind square. And so it's like, you know, here you, you rate at your emotional self and your spiritual self, your physical mm -hmm. self and your financials, blah, blah, blah. And we get so wrapped up in wanting to achieve that goal that everything it becomes like laser focused and everything else falls to the wayside. And so I, for my own self and then with the clients that I work with, it's like, okay, it's a day by day thing. You know, it's like you don't have to achieve everything all in one day or expect to achieve everything in a month or two months, for example, depending yeah. on what it is that we're working on, especially with bringing our businesses online. It it's a marathon and it's a cross country marathon, you know, and it takes time. I'm answering a question. Um, I'm going to say it too. Angela's asking, what are your tips for prioritizing? prioritizing goals when everything seems so important. Well, that's why I'm going to go in, into the reverse engineering on my February 2nd call, which ends my goal setting series. Um, we're going to take that long-term goal. Well, and look at LaShonda. Yeah, where did LaShonda go? I don't, this is what happened to Angela before. Everybody's going to die on me on the screen. Hello, don't do that. Um, <laughs> let's hope that we're still around. So I, the show in two weeks is going to be about reverse engineering and I'm going to get into some specifics about that. But instead of constantly looking at the end goal, you do have that as a visual or you do have it as a reminder. But if you keep looking at that as your next step, then you're really going to get lost along the way. You've got to bring that down into all of these different steps. And unless you map all of that out, you're not going to know how to prioritize uh, what's going on. So, and I mean, that's just for a long-term goal. Well, let's say you have 10 goals and here's what I tell people too. When you make your 10 goals, don't put eight long-term goals on there and two short-term goals. Okay. Cause it's, that's insane. You need to put two maybe three at the most long-term goals on your list and everything else needs to be a short-term goal like as in today this week this month you know and then the next thing is like the next quarter whatever maybe you have a five-year goal but that does not need to be number one on your list and you don't need to not reverse engineer that either so that you're not working towards it You've just got to take all of those short term goals, some of your, you know, mid medium sized goals and your long term and and map everything down to where everything is in kind of a common, the lowest common denominator as far as how much time and effort and um, money things may take. And then then you start creating your to do list from there. Um, in addition to that, what do you have anything that you need to stop working on so that you can move your life forward with your goals, Dallas? 
Mm, that is a good question. Anything that I need to stop working on? Mm -hmm. Or something you need to say no to? Yeah, actually, the, the thing that I needed to say no to and I have said no to is following what we were talking about earlier is, you know, I have like literally I, probably about 30 different emails that are coming in with all of these people that I originally signed up with back at last year. Oh, look, there we are. Yay. Oh, my gosh. Yay. <laughs> Sorry. Welcome Sorry. back. <laughs> I saw yeah. Shonda coming back. I was like, wait, I could come back? <laughs> Something happened. I think it's blab. Something happened. Oh, that right, what, say, that, say that last part again, Dallas. I can't remember what you just said. And so that was the that was for me the thing that I needed to say no to was to take a look at who I was following, who I had in my emails, and I was like, okay, this person, yes, I do want their information, but I don't need it right now. This person, yes, okay, this is something I need immediately. And so when I started taking a look at everybody that I had, I was like, out of all of these people and all of these services that I eventually do need for my business, who's my number one priority? And my number one priority is you, Sally, because I was like, okay, I'm at the very <laughs> beginning stages. I'm I need. So <laughs> <laughs> I need my email list, right? I need my email list. And so it's like, okay, learn. And, and that's what gets overwhelming because so many people have all these different platforms that they use that works for them. And it was like, okay, Sally says email or MailChimp. I have other people who say this one. I have other people who say this one. Which one do you use? And so it's like, okay, everybody just wipe the slate clean and let's start here. And I did get into that with um, wanting to buy this and buy that. And it's like, okay, why do that when I'm just learning? I'm, I'm in, the, in the learning curve stage. So MailChimp's free. Okay, cool. Canly, or can, the calendar that you use, that, that, that's free. And it's like, okay, why am I spending all of my hard-earned money trying do you, to... Do you know how yeah. to keep Calendly free? Actually, I haven't signed up for it yet, but I've seen what you've done with it. I like it. Okay. The other, the other program that I really like is Simplero. So, okay, Calendly can stay free, and okay. I can show you how to do that. So, Perfect. remind me, I've got a video on it. Wait, it can okay. stay free for more than one call, for more than one like calling. Um, I have, yeah, I've had Calendly for months. Because I just opened up another Calendly with another email address just to get it to give me like. <laughs> <laughs> I just opened up another Calendly account with another email address just so I can get more link options. Well, yeah, I mean, there's that. You, but I don't want to do that if I don't have to. That's weird. No, but you, but you also, you know how there'll be a trial period and you go through and you try to use yeah. all this stuff and then it'll say, oh, now you have to upgrade. Well, you can stop that. Like you can make it so that that particular account, if you turn off other things, will stay free. And then you do set up with another email address, another thing, but you can still make it go to the same, um, you create another Google calendar and you keep it all, it just has a different color. I've got a who's writing shotgun calendar. I've got a, a regular meeting calendar, <laughs> but then I'm also gonna create another, I got one more I've gotta do. I just gotta figure that out. I have it, it's on my list. <laughs> And my goals with everything that I'm doing. So I want That's to make nice. sure that I have all the right links for the all, excuse me, for all the right things. Yeah, I'd love to learn absolutely how you're doing that. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, I can send you a video on that. Um, okay, so what? So did, you see, did you see that Sharon wants to be like you when she grows up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I know, Sharon, I'm you. really tired right now. I have to say I'm so <laughs> exhausted. I, this vacation cannot be coming. <laughs> any sooner. I am so exhausted, but I, um, I've got a lot to do today. Oh, I've got to go to the bank today, two different banks. All right, let me write that down. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> so, and today, and just to give you, uh, some of you know me because you know that, um, we're in the same groups and all these different things, but just so you guys know, my mom is still in rehab. She broke her leg Christmas day. And I just was going to tell y'all, um, that, that's one more thing I've got to do today is that she's definitely on my list because this week has been so busy with all the webinars and classes that I haven't been over there in three days. And that's the longest 
Wow. I have not been in her presence since I got home from Florida after Christmas. Mm. So anyway, need to make that. around that, but I've got to, you know, yeah. Yeah. got to head over there and I've yes. got everything lined up for her to have somebody every day while I'm gone to come and give her some cheer. That's, good. That's great. Motivate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good, 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 good. Right. <laughs> I know. Texas, don't feel guilty. It's hard. You know, it's hard. I really, I, I'm the only one here in town this month, um, except for this next week I'm gone. And so then it's all non-family, non-immediate family here. Um, anyway, anyway. All right. So Angela, let's go to you because we have not gotten to talk to you yet because you've been a blank screen for a while or <laughs> something weird happened. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I don't know what happened. Um, but it's okay. It's all good. Uh, so I was just kind of hopping back and I was talking, uh, looking at your question and you were like, when do we actually have to let go of things? to create room for more things. And it's just so important, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I know that for me, uh, I had an agency for a while, a social media agency. And I, like, I'm an introvert at heart. So like, this is kind of weird because it's like, yes, it's online. But for me, it's just like all of us in this room a little bit, you know, it's not like thousands of people. Um, mm -hmm. So being a social media strategist, though, I come up with wicked strategies, like projecting that and mm -hmm. owning and dominating social media myself is something that I still struggle with because it's just like, oh my God, I don't want everyone to see me. Like I want to kind of <laughs> like hide behind the proverbial screen, but kind of like actually close the, the laptop and like <laughs> on the camera. Um, so I eventually ended up closing it and it was such a hard decision to make um, to, to close something that you've worked really hard on and you really wanted to work. But I was yeah. working hard in the wrong direction. I was going to ask you that because I, ooh, somebody's got a double echo going on. Um, I was going to ask you about that because, okay, it, it fixed, whatever it was. I saw where you posted in a group recently, or maybe a couple months ago, where you were like, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore, and I'm going back to work, and I'm doing this, and whatever. But then it was no time, and all of a sudden I'm like, you're doing an investment webinar? Hello, wait a second. We just started talking about reputation management a few months ago, and now you're talking about investing. So tell what you did in that switch, and how did you decide to let that go so that you could move forward with this? Or did that just pop up out of nowhere? Um, it was kind of a little bit of both. So I am still working. So at the time I had to make a really hard decision because my business, like I gave it maybe like two, three years. Um, and I was on a client to client model and I really wanted to take it online, but social media and my industry was so cramped. Um, and it was just really hard. So I just had to kind of make one of those, like, I need to rescue yourself. Like, I really want to start saving again. I'm tired of being stressed out. I'm obsessed downright with entrepreneurship. Like all my friends are like, you need to shut up. Like you need to live life a little bit. Like you're talking way too much about this. Like it's just not even healthy anymore. <laughs> so I realized I had an addiction um, called like my business and I stopped it. Yeah. And it wasn't a good addiction. It's not like the more I obsessed, the more it grew. It just got worse. <laughs> so I yeah. had thinking about that. And then I, I had a job. It's actually, um, and it's a client. It's like a full-time client and I'm a project manager and I absolutely love it, but I'm learning so much. So I thought initially I was going to do this bigger program about helping entrepreneurs find their dream job because there are a lot of people where it's not working for them. And a lot of yeah. uh, they're suffering, their savings are suffering, their credit cards are suffering. I mean, mm -hmm. their families are suffering because they're just like only they don't have time. They have to work all the time at something that's just not working. And it may not be working for many reasons. It could be them. But maybe not. Maybe it's just not the good timing. Maybe it's just not like a uh, good product fit to market fit. Like there's so many dynamics. So I said I wanted to create this program and say that if you find your dream job, you can do all these other things, like all these other businesses you wanted to have um, or all these other dreams you wanted to explore. And one of the dreams I've always wanted to explore was showing people how to invest in the market. Because when I was going through these shaky periods, um, cashing out my portfolio really saved me and kept the dream going for the longest. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be my own case study. I got a job, I love it. And at night or weekends, I'm working on this thing where I'm showing people how to invest. I didn't expect it to actually like, like bubble. Like, I didn't. <laughs> but then you got, what was the craziest thing recently though? You got at, uh, 
Did you get on somebody's podcast or somebody's show or what was that? So it's just crazy because it's kind of like, well, once I made a decision to stop doing one thing, it created enough space for all this other stuff to happen. And then I started like radiating on another energy level and doors just started opening. And now I see what it means to like work on your That's flow good. and work in your flow. Cause it's like, okay. this is like yeah. so easy. Like I just picked up my phone and it was a producer and he was like, Hey, we have a slot open in the show. Do you want to come? And I'm like, is this like real? <laughs> like, That's too. good. <laughs> and it was for marketing, but I was just like, I'm just not about that life anymore. So I <laughs> to investing. And then she was like, I need you back on the show like every month. So I'm going to be on the show every single That's month. Good. Hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I want to be on the show. What's the show? <laughs> Dude, I'm going to try to get all my friends on the show. You know how entrepreneurs do. It's like one of us come and right, then over. Right. <laughs> take over. Yeah. Well, now talk about finance and investing and things like that. You know, I've been an actuary for 20, almost 24 years. I cannot believe it's been that long. And I come from this corporate world. Forever I've been in corporate, but I'm really loving the whole creativity of, of doing your own online thing and being able to kind of step outside that corporate suit, you know, and into this online, more casual world, if you will. But yeah, yeah it's fun. I love it. So one thing I wanted to mention is that I've contacted my local banker who is my, you know, she manages our account. We have a, a business, a railroad business and a furniture business that my husband runs and they do all of our banking. And so we have like a dedicated manager at the bank. And she took me to lunch one day and I was trying to take her to lunch, but she insisted on taking me to lunch. I was like, okay, that's fine. And we talked through what's going on. And I'm like, you know, there are so many people out there like, investment portfolio managers or financial planners or accountants or whoever legal you know attorneys all these professionals that are still living in that corporate world who have not really understood how to break through with social media and also the big companies that they represent don't know how to do social media you're mm -hmm. looking at I mean, imagine looking at your news feed and seeing a Bank of America commercial come through and it's just your regular old commercial like you would see on the television. Mm -hmm. The likelihood of you clicking on that is very small and, and trying to go and see what that has for you. But, but when you have someone who works in that world who shares something like that and is excited about something going on, they get eight times more engagement when that single person, that employee or that uh, commissioned worker or whatever shares that information eight times. That's a huge, huge margin there, a huge leverage that I don't think people are really understanding. And I'm trying to find pockets of people who work in the corporate setting, but they still have to have relationship management going on in order to sell their services. Absolutely. And yeah. And they've got to break into the social media bit of it or they're not going to meet new people. You are stagnant if you are just going to all the chamber meetings. So you know, yeah. it's true. <laughs> and so I have to be and I in the chamber meetings forever. <laughs> you just can't. Yeah, no, I mean, there's only so much you can do. And so thank you. Um, female exec mag, what is your real name? So I want to call you a real name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, I am going to start doing some web webinars and things like that on how to break through in social media and start building relationships online with your professional career and not just in LinkedIn. A lot of people look at LinkedIn as the way to go and it is a wonderful tool and I do want to teach them how to use that. But most people literally put their profile on LinkedIn and think that that's all they need to do. 
and they just connect with all these people they know. And it's like, no, there's a whole lot more to it. You really mm -hmm. could be expanding your business in an incredible way. And if you just put park your resume up there and you don't have any rich content or any way of reaching out to people, you are just fodder for recruiters. And that's all you, you know what that's I mean? I mean, that's, mm -hmm. it, that's it. So you've got to use it to, yeah, there's a whole lot more to LinkedIn, but then you can also get into some of the other more social ones like Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest. And then you can also get into, and Twitter, of course, and you do some strategic things with those platforms and really expand your base of who you know out there and never have to worry about no know, knowing who to ask the next time you're looking for people to do business with i mean in, it's insane yeah. of course, i good. just went on a big tangent That's there <laughs> that was good that was good no, that was great information yeah well i mean lashonda you're a perfect example too of that professional CPA who's trying to meet people online. You've got to understand the strategy of how to use social media to be able to get your clients. When you, you know, you're launching your business now and when you get ready to really roll into that whole, uh, you know, doing webinars and doing um, calls with people and doing your strategy sessions online, you're going to have to go find people and you have to know where to engage, how to engage and the right way to do it. And it's not sending sleazy in mails. I mean, it's <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> but let me just say, um, because most assume that I am a CPA, but I'm not. Oh, I'm I thought a tax you accountant. No, I'm a tax uh, accountant. Okay. And my background is um, I had a tax franchise, but then also I'm a credit analyst with the federal government. My, um, experience is as a cash flow analyst, revenue modeling, um, doing credit modeling programs and all of that with the federal government, gotcha. um, budgeting, auditing, compliance, all of that. But then also I'm a licensed insurance agent. So I've just been, you know, assumed by the financial world and all things finance. And I've always loved accounting. My major was business management. So, you know, everything surrounding that, but I've just taken all of that to brand myself as the virtual CFO and as a tax strategist. Yes. Cause I've been doing taxes for over 20 years. So that's just what I do. Yeah. When we talk, and, and, the other, go ahead. Who was talking? Oh, I was just gonna say that's very interesting because I have been, I mean, doing taxes on a business, uh, brick and mortar type business is one thing. And I have, that's been something I've been wondering about. It's like, okay, how do taxes affect you when you're doing an online virtual business? I mean, if I've right. got clients all over, you know, not only here in the United States, but globally, or I take my business and I go and do a healing retreat overseas, like how does that affect me tax wise? So that I'd be right. very interested to find out it's more information. To all of that. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm getting ready to find that out. <laughs> <laughs> all of that, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, some, there isn't. there's not there enough really information isn't, no. on that. Like, mm -hmm. Um, oh yeah, I think you mean VAT, Michelle. Don't you mean VAT, V-A-T? Yes, VAT. V-A-T. Um, yeah, there's, yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but LaShonda, go into a little bit more about why um, you wanted to get online and how, what, what are your next steps? I know your big goal is to be, you know, have that, constant flow of people that you're meeting, but what, what are your next steps that you're going into? Um, well, next, well, one, because I did have a brick and mortar time, um, tax business, as I said, uh, for years, but I wanted to bring it back home base because I no longer wanted to be um, nailed down to a store. I was leaving my job yes. during the day, going mm -hmm. straight to um, the shop, even though it was just during the season, you know, the uh, peak part of the season, but you can only do that for so long <laughs> by yourself, you know, with your family, you know, kids and other obligations before you're just burnt out. Yeah. Um, I agree. So then when I um, decided to no longer be with the franchise and I wanted to go on my own and establish um, my own tax business or brand as LaShonda, mm -hmm. I brought it home base. 
And that's when I started thinking, mm, how can I do a little bit more and still have the same reach, you know, as I did before, or even a wider or broader reach by bringing it home. So that's when I was thinking about the virtual, doing it virtually. And yeah. that's when I became familiar, of course, with Facebook, social media. And then I became immersed with that whole thing. Like, you know, so how does this work? How does that work? And what does that mean to get online? You know, and like you said, I invested in programs, ten, fifteen thousand dollar programs or whatever um, with business mentors. And, you know, I learned a whole lot because they opened my eyes to um, most of what I didn't know about um, just branding me and doing things, um, taking my experience and branding, you know, me, LaShawn, then what I did. And um, basically creating my own economy from everything that I've learned along the way. Mm -hmm. But then connecting it to the online piece was just something totally different. So after I had done all mm -hmm. of that, then I came back home or, you know, once the program was up and then I was like, OK, now what do I do with what I have? And then I'm looking at EC webinar and I'm looking at the other software. So the marketing aspect for me was the next bigger thing. Like I understand how to do me, but then now what is marketing strategy? What, you know, now I'm trying to sell this and sell that, connect the pieces and all of that. So that's when um, I think you and I actually met in a marketing program that yeah. we were participating in. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, each piece just became a bigger piece and a, another black hole because now <laughs> we're having to figure out what that is. And I'm still trying to do my business, you know, still going to my nine to five you know, and doing all of that and being mommy and then I'm a CFO for a nonprofit. I mean, so it was, there's a whole lot going on and then to come back and I'm still looking at how do I get the webinar set up? How do I do this? How do I do that? So that whole thing just took me on another tangent. Like you said, that causes you to procrastinate because you know how to do your business part, but then the IT part behind that, you know, doing the social media, um, um, what is it? Um, posting everything on social media, then getting your content together, writing your programs. I mean, that was just madness. So yeah, it is you know. madness. And now everybody <laughs> just take a big deep breath. It's like <laughs> right, 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 right. And through, I love it because you know. I need to know. And even though I was outsourcing some of it, you still need to know some of it in order to eat yeah. to even outsource yeah. it and to tell them <laughs> to do things. But then I was not leading it. No. And then when I was not getting the results that I thought I should have, what I was looking for, I, I was trying to figure that whole thing out. I said, hold up, wait a minute. So I rang that back in and I'm like, I don't need to pay anybody to do anything because I need to understand now how yeah. to lead it. So that's when I went into figuring out the marketing thing for myself. I'm mm -hmm. so glad so I can go back and outsource it. Yeah. yeah. I'm so glad you said that because a lot of people will think, oh, well, I can understand computer things. I know how to go in and do this. And they'll think, well, I'm not going to take these courses on how to do this because mm -hmm. that's just software. I'll just get an account and I'll just figure it out. But what they don't realize is that you get inside these things and the lingo is different. There's a lot of information, a lot of keywords, a lot of things that you just don't know what to do. And if you don't have somebody kind of giving you those shortcuts, you could spend three, five, seven times as long on something that you That's literally true. could have done in 15 minutes. I mean, yeah. it's ridiculous how, um, how much there is out there to consume. And if you just don't, if you don't have somebody helping you along the way here and there, it just makes such a big difference when you have a consultant like that, that can help. Yeah, All right, absolutely. So, it's kind of difficult when working with clients. Owners must leave their business and leave their freelancers and VA's direction of their business. Correct. Correct. You can hand everything to a VA. A VA is there yeah. to take direction from you. A VA is not there to take your business to the next level. You're there to take your business to the next level. The right. VA is going to help you do that, but Correct. not direct you into doing that. A coach Correct. is going to be the one that directs you into doing it. The VA is right. the one off to the side that you use to help take some of the load off and to delegate to. It's so important. And 
VAs know it too. They want your business for sure, but they don't want your business when you expect them to create your strategy. That's you. true. That's true. And then they're saying that because you know they don't really understand. Um, first of all, your business, and they're working for more than just you. Um, they're working for other business owners, so mm -hmm. you can and you can give them a whole lot of tasks to do, but if it's not um, generic. They don't still understand. They need to understand what the strategy is. They need to know your voice, you know, mm -hmm. and your business and then your content in order to do certain things. But if you don't first know that, then you can't lead them. You can't give them the task. You really can't check behind them, you know, to know if it's going to be effective or not or if it's working or not if you don't understand it. So mm -hmm. I got that after maybe like seven to nine months of paying somebody. And I'm like, okay. So no. I had a social media expert. I had a VA. I had whatever. They said you need it. Go get okay. I'm gonna go get that. I'm gonna go get that. I'm gonna go get that. And mm -hmm. then I'm like, okay, I still don't have anybody coming to my site. They're coming, but then they're not being converted. So yeah. something's not working here, you know. Right, so right. Um, but again, too, I need to understand that part because I didn't know anything about conversions, whatever. I look, I was just totally just green, just totally green <laughs> on that, but. Well, um, does anybody else have anything they want to mention? Because it is after one o'clock and our central time after one o'clock. And I like to wrap this up uh, usually within an hour. So um, I've got to go run all these errands today so I can go to St. Martin tomorrow. So jealous. <laughs> you have fun. You know, really, you have fun. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, and I've got one other thing. Dallas, would you like to lead us in something to take us away and be calm about the rest of the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. Really, when it comes to just calming yourself down and getting grounded into being into your center, it's just a simple exercise of just taking a moment to find that place in your space of just being able to be still and be quiet. So find that space for yourself and take a few moments. It really can be something as simple as just laying down for 10 minutes and setting yourself a timer. If you know when we are running and churning and going a million miles per hour with our to-do lists, you know, the moment you stop and you become still, you find that you can go like that out like a light. And so if you find that you're in that space, just take time to just kind of ground and center yourself and take that break. Self-care, self-care, self-care. I cannot stress that enough to all of us, my clientele. I, it is essential. Otherwise, if you have that good old airline mask metaphor, you know, if you don't put your mask on first, you can't help anybody else. So That's true. That's true. All right. Anybody else want to say anything before I... <laughs> That's cute. My husband uses this in the, his videos, and I found it downstairs. And I was like, "Oh, I need that," and I forgot to do it at the beginning. Awesome. Cool. So I was just gonna say that. Um, thanks, Sally, for having me hop on the show. Super. Yeah. Uh, last minute and you women are extremely inspirational and just keep on going and everyone who made it live. Um, yeah, just kind of like keep on like pushing and, and fighting and enjoying life while you're doing it. I love that you're going on vacation tomorrow, Sally. Like, I think that yeah. more of us need to take those moments to stop, recollect and almost like spend time doing what we're doing it for. You know, those many vacations, those many breaks, like why wait till you make it big? Mm -hmm. um, to start mm -hmm. living the life of your dreams. Like you could do it right now, right? Mm -hmm. So just Absolutely. keep going for it and making those dreams happen. And they're happening like you're in it. It's All right. Yay. I'm so yeah. glad that you are doing this investing thing now because you know, it, it, soon, I, well, I know I do need to buy now, but <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Everybody, you guys have a great weekend. Next week Thank is you. going to be... Um, living the laptop life. I will be broadcasting from St. Martin from one of the most beautiful homes I've ever seen. Stop I rubbing like, it in. I like to call <laughs> my trip the uh, real we house. We have to wife. do a meet up there. That's what we have to do. I know. Yeah. <laughs> this house is ridiculous, but wow. I got invited to go. It's a lot of people from Nashville. I have no kids or husband on this trip. Wow. And Woo! Real Housewives. That's even Real great. Housewives. That's bigger, better. <laughs> it's the Real Housewives. Real Housewives of Nashville go to St. Martin. So that's a wrap. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. Thank Bye. you, everyone. See ya. Bye. Bye.